a local office here that does cancer preventative blood testing where they have a cancer blood profile test. And they say, if you take these tests and all of them are, are pretty well known here, but some are only available in England. But they say, if you take these tests, they can give you a good chance or uh, indication if you have or you're getting cancer or not by all these cancer tumors being high. And you can monitor everything through your blood work that you don't need uh, biopsies and mammograms and all these things. Do you think the blood work alone is good enough to monitor all these things? Or again, is it case case basis? Not really, but let me explain for a minute, okay? Okay. I'm saying here that this is a little bit um, hard for people to grasp. It's that all Americans, almost all Americans have atherosclerosis and have plaque in their arteries because of the way they eat. And even the men that were killed in the Vietnam War, their average age of death was 19 and a half and the majority of them had fatty streaks and plaques, already damaged to their heart. But the Vietnamese counterparts at the same age did not. They weren't eating a diet as bad as Americans. The point I'm making is that by the time you're 60 or 70 years old, all Americans have cancer in their body if they're living on American food. And these tests are not sensitive enough to detect. If they were sensitive, they detect every single person with cancer cells in their body. Because by the age of 70, probably 80% of Americans have or should be, be able to be diagnosed with cancer with as these tests improve over the years. They're going to keep improving, of course. And we're going to find out that everybody has cancer. And so, and the answer is why, well, the point I'm making is if you haven't been living that healthfully or if you, why not live a life that where we can eat delicious food that, that, that gives our body the, the nutrients and the ability to maximize immune function to stop cancer? Why do you have to wait to do that until you have cancer? Just do it anyway, oh, even if you don't have cancer. Sure. You know what I mean? I'm not, you know, but, but and then, and, and if their tests were sensitive enough, all their patients would have cancer that would, would show up cancer cells. It should, you know, because it obviously, um, some of these tests are only sensitive as the cancer advances. They're not detecting cancer right. in its early stages. Now we have the, but I, I know the ENOX2 protein test, some of the, these cancer cells shed pr certain proteins into the bloodstream at an earlier stage than others. And even there was a one test on the ENOX2 proteins that shed into the cell, into the bloodstream from can early stage cancer cells, where they didn't even change people's diets. They just gave them curcumin, green tea extract, and turmeric, and they showed that after like six to nine months, the proteins were no longer found in the blood. You know, so we're talking here about the, the powerful effect of plant compounds to, to interfere with cancer cell replication, cancer cell growth. Um, okay, so- In any case, so I'm saying that it's early science, it can't be relied on, and it's not that sensitive, right? But it is helpful to know that a warning sign, right? With the blood test. I don't, I'm not sure about that. Okay. Because look, um, you're getting people, some people are going to get false positives. That means you're going to get people scared they have cancer when they really don't. And a lot of people, and most people get false negatives. They're told they don't have cancer when they really do. The tests are not accurate to get. So I'm not saying it's a good thing or not. You know, I would rather have all people consider that they're all at risk of getting cancer if they eat American food, if they're eating, you know, fried foods and oils and cheeseburgers and, you know, and fast food and processed foods and animal products. If you just live in America, you're gonna be at risk of cancer. Why not just, we should all assume we're gonna be at risk of that. We don't need those tests because those tests are too inaccurate, leading to too many false negatives and too many false positives. So I'm not necessarily joining the bandwagon on that. I'm okay. just saying, why don't, you, why don't you just start eating healthy anyway? Now, if what if somebody's eating healthy and yeah. they get diagnosed with cancer. Should they be thinking in their mind, well, I've got to do something else, or should they just try to stay on the path? Well, you and I know that most people think they're eating healthy aren't eating healthy. Well, let's say somebody's eating your diet the, 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 and, and they, they get diagnosed. We know this stuff can happen from the past, what they've done before or whatever, and it's a slim chance that that would happen. But somebody like AJ, for example, does she stay on? The, She's not a nutritarian. She was not a nutritarian. Okay, but in general, somebody's on a nutritarian diet, and we're going to get into that folks in a little while about what that is, but let's say somebody's eating a nutritarian diet, they get diagnosed with cancer. At that point, do they stay on the diet and just, or do they, do they now do they have to change something? We do change a few things. What we do is we use mostly change the supplements, right? 
And of course, we can always do things to ch look at what they've done in their diet and see if we can increase more like broccoli sprouts or more cruciferous vegetables, more raw oil. There's all things make, we can maybe improve. But the main thing we do is we change the supplements. Because example, for example, is that there are certain supplemental ingredients, mostly mostly herbs and spices that have very powerful anti-cancer effects. I alluded to some of them, right? So we're talking about some substances we give people, like the way I treat them with a product that contains black turmeric, curcumin extracts from raw turmeric, and certain extracts from certines, from green tea, a certain and mushroom extracts, we certain things we add to their diet in higher amounts. And I may even, and I would like a person then to have this um, cancer replication suppressor the 24 hours a day. So I give them seven o'clock in the morning, 12 noon, 5 p.m., 10 o'clock at night. And then when they wake in the night, middle of the night to go to the bathroom to, to urinate, they take another one. So we have like five pills round the clock of these cancer suppression, replication suppression herbs or substances from natural plants. And it's, it's markedly effective and shown to be, you know, there's some um, effectiveness shown in studies as well as with mushroom extracts. But in any case, so yes, there's certain things we do in the anti-cancer protocol that are a little different than what we're doing in a person who's just living to prevent cancer, which are more um, extensive and maybe more expensive even, you know what I mean?